the ba there are barriers up now um, that I'm denied access to. It's like something's been blocked. I mean, I think maybe in the early years I had more vivid memories of what smells were like, you know. And, you know, when you're reading a book and it's describing smell, I think maybe I could grasp that from memory. And I'm not sure that I can now. I was going through a process of mourning and grief and, you know, all those emotions that you go through, you know, anger and sadness and depression. Um, one of the hardest things was um, the, the fact that this loss is, is invisible and so, and also very hard for people to relate to. Okay, so I was cycling to work in the morning uh, and I was cycling down a hill and a car was overtaking me and believed that it could overtake and turn left in front of me quicker than myself going down a hill on my bike and so the car just went straight into me, threw me off my bike, I landed on the, the edge of the concrete pavement so I was knocked unconscious and um, taken to hospital. I remember when I was lying in bed, I think it was about two days after the crash, friends had sent flowers and I turned to smell the flowers and they had no smell. And I thought, oh well, you know, sometimes you buy flowers and they don't have any smell. So I didn't, you know, I didn't quite compute what was going on. And then gradually I began to realise that actually I couldn't smell anything. It just became part of the trauma, really. And I suppose I was in shock, I think probably for quite a long time. I think probably it took about a year of, well, first of all, recovering from what had happened physically, um, but also adjusting to this person who could no longer smell. Walking into a shop or a, a cafe and that's got freshly brewed coffee on the go, or, the, or in your own kitchen just grinding coffee. I used to love that smell of freshly ground coffee. What I miss massively is the sense of relief and release and kind of uplift that you get from just, you know, like I'm on holiday and I'm walking through a country lane or something in the heat, you know, and that sense of the earth, so sort of hot earth and nature and, and I remember as a child going out and just that gorgeous, gorgeous smell after the rain. The smell of cooking, you know, the sizzle of of spices and garlic and lemon. Coriander and cumin and just all of that medley of, of uh, spices.
And so I, I began to realise what a major deal it was, not being able to smell and not being able to enjoy the tastes um, that, that, that smell brings as well. And the same with taste, I have no idea if things are off or not. So people have to, obviously you, you look and you can see by some of it, your milk will curd or whatever. But generally speaking, I could be eating poisonous food and I would have not the slightest idea, or food that was off. But yeah, you do, you know, and you do rely on other people to be your smell monitors or your smell crutches or your taste crutches. Um, because, you know, you need them, you need to do that. So yeah, it does get in the way. The way it feels to me now is I feel there's been a huge, enormous metal door that's been slammed shut. And I suppose in that motion is the severing of the olfactory nerve kind of idea. Um, and that there's, I can't open that door, it's been shut to me and nothing will ever open that door again. I used to love bubble baths and, you know, lavender bath or shampoo and all the different smells of the shampoo. So you'd, I'd actually enjoy, part of the enjoyment of washing my hair would be, you know, the scent. Obviously there's the whole thing about body odour, because I have absolutely no idea about how I smell. So I always shower every single day, which I might have done anyway, but anyway, very, very consciously. I wash clothes all the time, you know, because I have no idea. And then something I hugely miss, even though I've never had it, is the smell of my son. From birth, it's that kind of primal thing, isn't it? You know, you go through birth and you want to smell your baby, you know, as he's lying on you. Well, I didn't, or the smell of the milk because I was feeding him, or, you know, even the smell of his nappies or whatever. So that's something that I've missed and still miss. I mean, you know, if I hug my son, I don't know what he smells like, you know, and that's just, um, and that's part of what it is to be human, isn't it? I suppose, although you can still be human and not smell. But that sense of smell, which people generally just don't give a moment's thought to, but it is, I think that's why I say it's what it is to be human, because it's trying to explain to people what, what it's like to not have it, because it's part of our identity, what we smell like. We have a smell identity, don't we? And if you can't smell it anymore, and it's blocked, then uh, you're losing that sense of connection. So I think there is a kind of disconnection that happens without question. When you lose your sense of smell and taste, you are disconnected. Something's disconnected in terms of the way you relate to the world. Um, I've never known what my son smells like and I never will. Unless it's happened to you, I don't, I don't think people can really know what it's like. I suppose they can if they block their nose, maybe, uh, completely uh, for a year or something, or it would have to be for a long time before, because I think it takes a year, really, and I'm talking about someone who became an osmic rather than someone who's born an osmic, um, for you to really completely compute the ever-present absence.